Hello again, this is Topher with Lonely Dash, and today we're going over Toplitz Matrix number 766 of Leet Code, which says, given an M by N matrix, return true if the matrix is Toplitz, otherwise return false. A matrix is Toplitz if every diagonal from top left to bottom right has the same elements. And I'm only hoping I'm saying this word right, toplets. Uh, if anybody knows if I'm doing it wrong, please let me know. Uh, anyway, so here is the example matrix that was given in the question. And I've written it out as an actual matrix over here to kind of give you the idea of what it would look like in your actual coding. And we know that this is a toplets matrix, right? Because up here in the top left-hand corner, we can see a one. And if we go down one and a right one, we can see it's also a one. We go down one and right one. And I can even show you this, this here. This diagonal, all of the numbers are exactly the same. If we do another diagonal, all of the numbers are exactly the same. And another diagonal, all of the numbers are exactly the same. So that is a toplets matrix. Um, matrix. Now, in order to figure out whether something needs to be returned as true, we have to start off by identifying two things. First, we need to identify the number of rows here that we're dealing with, and we need to identify the number of columns that we're dealing with. So obviously here we have three rows and four columns. And so I'm just going to identify them. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of writing with my mouse today. It doesn't look great. But here's our number of columns and our number of rows using zero-based indexing. Okay, so really we know that if we're thinking of it in terms of M and N up here, as we are given in the question, our M is equal to the number of rows, which of course is three, and our N is equal to the number of columns, which is four. And we're gonna to need to know that information in order to write our code. So when we're thinking about it, we could brute force it. And we're starting, we'll say, okay, in order to solve this, we're gonna look at our very first number in our uh, row and our very first number in our first column. And we're just gonna say, okay, uh, is zero, zero the same as one, one? And we'd say, yeah, of course. We're just adding one to each one of these, um, e each one of these indices. And we'd say, okay, that's the same. We'll add it again. We'll add one to this and we'll add one to this. And we'll say, okay, is two, two the same? Well, yeah, it is. And we could go through all the iterations and that would be perfectly fine. It'd be a little bit more complicated. But for purposes of today, we are going to start at this lovely number. We're starting at one, one. And instead of comparing down and right, we're gonna compare up and left, okay? And the reason is, is that we're going to get down here eventually, and I'll make it a little bit more clear. We're going to end up down here. And because we know the number of rows, as soon as our, I guess you could call it a pointer, as soon as we leave, our area, it's just gonna stop and we're going to move on. So I'll, I'll give you an example, we're, we'll work through it. So we'll say, okay, is our number at one one the same as our number up and left at zero zero? Yes, of course it is, fantastic, we're gonna move on. But we're not gonna move on to the next number here, we're gonna move this direction, right? Because we have to finish all of the rows. So then we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, uh, is the number here at two, or I should say one, two, is it going to be the same as zero, one, which is this number? Yes, it is. Great, we're moving on to the next column and we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, is this number the same? And this number is one, three. Is it the same as zero, two? And of course it is, yes. And we can't move right anymore. So instead, we're going to move down and go back to our one column. And we're gonna do the same thing, comparing these two numbers, and then we're gonna compare these two numbers, and then we're gonna compare these two numbers, one and two, and by the time we're finished doing that, we'll have compared these, 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 and these. And the only things that we have left to compare are this four and this nine, which interestingly, we don't have to compare because they have no diagonals. So if we can get through this entire loop of comparisons, then we can return true if we complete the loop. However, if at any time, the number to the top left does not match 
the number or the element that we're dealing with, we're just going to return false. Okay, so I know that sounds maybe a little bit complicated, but when we write some code, it'll become more clear. So again, if we're looking over here on the right side of our matrices, we're going to compare one number to the number above and left to, of it. Then we're going to continue on in the column, and our next step will be to compare that number to the number above and left of it. And then we're going to move on again, and we're going to compare the number on the right side to the number above and left. And as soon as we run out of room in our column, we're going to move back to index 1 and compare the next row until we get to the end of that column. And when we reach the end of the column, at the end of the rows, we're done and we can return our answer. Okay, let's see if there are any edge cases to consider. For our edge cases, let's just take a look and see what our constraints say. Okay, so we know that M is going to equal the matrix dot length, or the length of our matrix, which means that's going to be our number of rows. We know that our N is going to be the number of columns because of matrix I dot length. In this case, I guess they're using Java, um, is basically saying this is matrix 1 here. Or I'll even highlight it here. This is matrix I. The length of it is four, so that tells us the number of columns. So that is going to exist uh, because M, so our rows, we're going to have at least one row, and our N is going to have at least, oh, it's going to be less than 20. So it's going to be fairly small, equal to or less than 20. Uh, okay, so I guess theoretically we could have no columns. We can't really have negative columns. Uh, it doesn't say it can't be zero, so we could theoretically have, or I guess, one column because we do a uh, single index at any rate, and that our matrix IJ uh, is going to exist entirely. So there's not really any edge cases to consider. Uh, let's move on to some pseudocode. For our pseudocode, you can see I'm just going to be typing it into the Python section of the Leet Code website. Again, it doesn't matter where you type it. Uh, so the very first thing that we need to do that we talked about was identify, identify, okay, so I'm just going to do identify the number of rows in matrix. Okay, so that's the very first thing we need to deal with. And of course, we need to identify the number of columns in matrix. Uh, our number of rows, right? So we have our rows, which go left to right, and our columns, which go up and down. If we don't know the numbers of each, we won't be able to move forward. So that's the first two things. Then we're going to have to create a loop. So loop through each row, and then within that, we're going to have to do a nested loop that also that loops through each column right? Because when we talked about it, we knew that uh, we're starting on the second row, but we're going to go through the column first and then move on to the next row. So that's why we're looping through each row that also loops through each column, okay? So then if the element that is above and left of the current element um, is not the same, so it's not if it's not the same, then return false, okay? Otherwise, uh, we are going to continue the loop, uh, right? Because it's just going to loop through each one of the columns going left to right, and then it's going to loop down through each one of our rows. Uh, if the loop uh, finishes, then return false sorry, then return true. Because if that completely finishes the loop, that means that we are in a Topolix matrix and you just return true. Now it does not look like a whole lot of code to write. And hopefully this will become more clear when we get to actually writing the code. So let's go do that now. Okay, as you can see, I just copied our pseudocode into the Java work area of the Leap Code website, and we're going to follow line by line. So first we need to identify the number of rows in matrix. So we know it's going to be an integer. So integer rows, we'll call it rows for the number of rows, is just matrix.length, right? Simple, straightforward. Next, integer uh, columns. Right? We need to find out the number of columns in each one of our rows, and that is going to be the length of the very first row 
in our matrix. So integer rows equals matrix length, and integer columns equals matrix of our first row length. L-E-N-G-T-H. Am I just misspelling that entirely? Length. And again, length. There we go. Uh, now that we have identified our number of rows and identified a number of columns, we can get rid of that. We need to loop through each row that also loops through each column, okay? And so we're going to use a for loop. Uh, so for, and we'll use integer i equals zero. So this is going to be, you know what, let's change it to row, right? So integer row. So there's going to be one row. And it's not even going to equal zero, it's going to equal one, right? So we typically start at zero because we think we're going to start at the beginning of any of our rows or matrices. But remember, we're not starting uh, looking at the first element in our matrix. We're looking at the one on the second row in the second column. And when we're using zero indexing, we're going to have to start on row index one instead of zero. So for integer row one, as long as the row is less than rows, right? Because as soon as uh, we run out of the number of rows, we've got to stop our loop. And we are going to iterate row plus plus. It goes by a one. Okay, so that's what's going to iterate us through each row. But we also need to iterate through each column. So we're going to do the same thing. So for integer column, oh, column, that's going to equal one. And as long as column is less than columns, less than the number of columns, we're going to iterate also by one. All right, so that's what's going to take us through column M ends S. There we go. Make sure I spell it all right. So this line is going to take us from left to right. And then as soon as we finish the first, or as soon as we finish that row, this line is going to take us to the next row below it. And all we're doing is comparing the number that we're iterating from or iterating through with the number that is above and left of it. So how do we do that? So if matrix and in this case, row, right? Because this is going to start at one row column. And this is also going to start at one. Does not equal matrix row minus one and column minus one, right? So our row and column, we're starting at one, one. And we want to know if it's the same as up left, which means it'd be one minus one is zero. And one minus one is zero, so zero, zero. So if it is not the same as the diagonal up left, then we need to return false. False. Otherwise, it's just going to continue through our for loops until we reach the very, very end. And when we reach the end of our loop, we're going to return true. So if we get to the end of our for loops without returning false, that means it is a Topolitz uh, matrix and we're done. So that should be all of the code that is necessary for solving this problem. Let's hit run code and see how we did. And it's accepted. Let's hit submit to see if it fits all of our test cases. We'll have a look over here. And yes, it's done. Now, it, <laughs> this shows that it's two milliseconds, but faster only than 38.07. Uh, I don't know why it says that. It's usually a pretty darn good way to solve this type of question. But that's it. That is all the code you need in order to solve the Topolitz matrix question using Java.